I am really excited with what we're going to cook today because it's just bloody delicious and so not good for you and so naughty. I know food shouldn't be naughty and nice, but we all know it often is. This is something that is not a, should not be part of a, your a staple your staple diet, right? It just should not be. It's just a special thing to have occasionally, maybe once a year. Hey, Mum, my Mum's on in Melbourne. Haven't seen my Mum for months, so Mum. Big kisses and hugs to you from me. Um, hopefully you all saw the picture of Mum on Insta Stories the other day with her donuts. It was amazing. Hi, Amit. Yeah, um, yeah, Amit's ready for a glass of wine with me. <sighs> Hi, Esther, my sister. The whole family's here today. My brother is not, actually, I might say. He is working. And, um, you know, so good morning, Sue. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Jax. Yeah, let's all be naughty together. What the hell? We're in bloody lockdown. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a bit blah about the whole thing. It's just so blah. It really is. It's so... Uh, oh, how long has your lockdown extended? A week, Melbourne? Oh, you know what? We're all in it, and it's all just never going to end. No, I shouldn't say that. I know it is going to end, but today I'm feeling like it's never going to end. I think that everybody, um, I don't know, a lot of people maybe are feeling like I'm feeling today. But I'm here, and I am here for you guys. I just want you to know that. Whether I'm feeling blah or whether I'm feeling excited, I'm here because I'm just happy. Thank God for you guys, really. Without you, I don't know what I'd do. I'd just be blah on my own at home. So this is great. And we have this beautiful family that we're building. I know so many of you now that I never knew. Do you know, I think this, this is the 25th. Um, Insta live that I've done in a row so I'm happy that we're building this beautiful family so I'm happy to be here with all of you and I know that when I eat a potato cake or scallop for lunch I'm going to feel much better as you all will too so let's start and I want to, I'm going to talk more later because I want to just get this started okay I talk too much I know but let's um, get cooking and I'll talk about Jane and the book in a minute but I just want to do the potatoes first for those of you who are cooking along you need your oven on 180 degrees they take about an hour so you're going to be behind you'll have to watch it later um, and um, thank you all for your lovely comments I really appreciate it um, you're going to be an hour or so behind because they've got to cook for and cook for half an hour and sit for half an hour but let's peel the potatoes okay so for this recipe we are using two Desiree potatoes I want a waxy potato I don't want to I don't want to you know there's potatoes that are flowering and potatoes that are waxy and it really took me, honestly, like 30,000 years to understand the difference. It really took me a long time. And even some days I, I have to look it up again. I forget which is which. So the waxy is something that you want to fry or that you want to cook, put in a potato salad. Or um, you. it's not good for mashing so much. Mashing you want a dry or a floury potato. So the dirty potatoes are the floury ones. They're brilliant for mashing, okay? Really good for mashing because they soak up lots of milk and butter and whatever else. For this recipe, because we are in effect frying the potatoes, we're gonna use a waxy potato. In Australia, there's one called a Desiree, which is a light yellow flesh, and it's good for actually everything. It's called an all-rounder, and I like that. So we're gonna use two medium size. This is a bloody giant one. I've told you before that my fruit shop think that the bigger the better, and it's just not true, okay? Um, but so I'm going to pretend this is two, okay? This is 350 grams of potatoes. So peel your potatoes. You're going to need a small roasting pan or baking dish like this because we're going to put them in one layer. We're going to slice them. We're going to cover them with boiling water, and we're going to put them in the oven for 30 minutes at 180 Celsius, okay? And that's without the fan. So if you've got a fan oven, do it a bit lower, 165. So I'm just going to peel it. And as you get to know your potatoes, you'll know your Desirees. I can't tell you that when you peel a Desiree, Desiree or cut a Desiree compared to a red potato, it's a different feeling. It's got a different sound to it. Am I the only one whose potatoes have sounds? Um, it just feels different. It's a little bit softer, not as, not as much like a apple. Not as much like a nashy pear, perhaps more than an apple. Anyway, so okay, peeling the potato. I'm sorry Melbourne's gone into another week, but I just want you guys not to end up where we are. It's just so many cases every day and it feels a bit out of control here. And I just hope everybody is getting vaccinated because the quicker we do that, the more 
likely we're going to get life as we once knew it, perhaps. Anyway, in the meantime, let's eat potato cakes. Okay, then I'm going to cut my um, potato, pretend I'm going to cut it in half and pretend I've got two potatoes. I'm going to trim off the end, but you don't have to. Um, you know, I got my knife sharpened on the weekend, on Friday. First thing, I was cutting some raw chicken for, to make some soup, and I said to someone in the kitchen, to one of the kids, I said, You've got to be careful, these knives are sharp. And I didn't even cut my finger, it like slipped past it, and I've got a cut on my finger that's been annoying me for four days. It's just starting to heal now. So be careful if you're cutting and talking. And I'm going to cut each potato into about six slices. I want them about three quarters of a centimetre thick, okay? Um, I tried them a bit thicker. It just doesn't seem to work as well with the batter. So you sort of want them to all be the same size, just so you can be on top of the cooking time and the frying time and the boiling time and all that. So I'm just going to trim this. And I've got a weird piece which I'm going to use for something else. And then I'm going to cut six from this one. Obviously, if your potatoes are bigger or smaller, you need to adjust the number that you're going to be cutting, okay? So we're just cutting them. It's funny, I'm spending so long cutting potatoes. Um, all right, that'll do. I think that'll do. So I'm going to then get a roasting pan or a, you can get any sort of oven-proof dish and lay the potatoes out in one flat layer and they should all be around about the same. How many have I got? So I've got nine, yeah, I did a bad job, doesn't matter. Um, so you've got your 12 slices of potato, pretend that's 12, and then you get boiling water like from the kettle and you pour it on top of the potatoes. Just like this, it's very simple. And then you get some foil and you cover your baking dish like this, cover it well. And that way the potatoes have been cooked from underneath, from all around and steaming from on top because the foil's there. So this now goes in the oven for 30 minutes. Set your timer and then take it out and it's going to sit on the bench for another 30 minutes just like that. Okay, I'm going to put that aside. And I'm going to fast forward because I have done it ahead so that you didn't have to sit with me for an hour. Although maybe today we could have opened, we could have had that wine and sat together and chatted about all sorts of things, but let's not go down that path again about what's going on in the world. And I want to show you the next step. So pretend it's fast forwarded an hour. It's been sitting on the bench for 30 minutes. I want you to get a clean tea towel. Um, I use, and I said this the other day for those who were there, I'm not sure who which session it was. I use like these linen ones that I often get as, you know, hostess gifts and stuff. I use them for things like this. And I use my toweling ones, my tea towel ones for drying. I find these really good for jobs in the kitchen. So I put it on a board, or I'm putting it on a, on a chopping board just because I want to be able to move it. And we've got our potatoes that are now cooling in the water. And you can use a slotted spoon or your hands, they're actually cool enough to touch. They're still a bit warm. And I'm going to just put them now onto the tray with the towel so that they dry. Okay, so the idea now, so now they're cooked, I can feel they're soft, you could stick a skewer in to check. The idea is that we want the potatoes to be really well cooked. We've all had potato cakes where the potato is a bit raw still, it's not good. I want the potato really well cooked, okay? So I'm going to just put them on this tray. The only word of warning here is that if you do this too far ahead now, in about half an hour they'll start to go grey and look very unattractive. And I know you're battering them so maybe you won't be able to tell but I think it's better to just time it right. So as soon as they dry, we're ready to go to the next step. And I'm going to turn them over and just make sure they're going to be nice and dry by the time we batter, okay? So everyone follows the cooking of the potatoes. I'm going to set those aside for a moment, just like that. Um, what I did as a little experiment is that I cooked these on Sunday, Monday, and I put them, I drained them just like that, and I put them in a container with cold water, and I've kept them in the fridge since then. Just thought maybe it's worth exploring what that happened, what that's like. So now my potato, I think it will be quite good. I'm going to fry a couple of those also and see and um, I might report back. My guess is that they're not a Desiree potato. Have a look at the difference. 
of colour, the Desiree. And I think sometimes my fruit shop sends me Pontiacs, which are red skinned instead of the pink skinned Desiree. See the difference? Desiree Pontiac. Anyway, let's fry a couple. And if they are Pontiac, we won't know if, they're, if this works. But it's actually not a bad thing to try. All right. Before we start the batter ingredients, which is so simple, I want to just tell you about the book that it's from. So when we were trying to get published um, in 2007, 8, 9, um, we went around to all the publishers in Australia and we went to Murdoch Books, whose books at the time were probably the best in Australia. And we spoke to the publisher there, Jane Lawson, and we had a great couple of meetings with her and we dealt with her for about a year until they said no, but that's another story. But we have continued to be in touch with Jane since then. She helped us pitch for our, um, when we were pitching to Collins, and she's become a good friend. And she's a cookbook author and she's also runs um, these amazing Japanese tours. Have a look on the Instagram post that I um, posted yesterday on our Instagram um, with the potato cake picture and all her details are there. Go and have a look at her website. It's actually amazing. But this is her book. It's called Milk Bar Memories and I love it because what it's got, it's got all those things that we loved growing up in Australia from the milk bar, musk sticks, sherbet, wagon wheels, which we're doing on Friday. So all those things. And I just felt like going back to those recipes from my childhood. I think we all need some sort of comfort now in this uncertain time. And I'm finding it through food from my childhood. You know, donuts last week, um, meatloaf yesterday. It's all very much from my childhood. And this book just hits the nail on the head at every single turn. I've just picked two recipes because they're my favourites. Um, potato cakes, for those who don't know, in Australia we have fish and chip shops at every corner in every suburb. And... Growing up, I um, used to take the number eight tram down to Turak Village where there was the best fish and chip shop of all time. And I used to go with my friend Tamara, um, who may be watching, hi, hi Tam if you are. Um, and we used to get off the tram and we used to go into the fish and chip shop and we used to order potato cakes, dim, sim, dim sims, fried and steamed. And um, that was our order. Yeah, not a really healthy Friday afternoon snack, but we loved it. So what a potato cake is, for those who don't know, it's a piece, it's a disc of potato, which has been pre-cooked, which is then dipped in a batter and then deep fried. And it's the same batter that you'd get on your fish if you got fish and chips in Australia. So it's that sort of batter. So if you want to make fish and chips, this is the batter to use as well. Um, it's a thick batter. It's, um, it look, you'll see what it looks like in a minute, but... When you go into the fish and chip shop in Australia, they have all the things already, I'm going to say par-cooked or actually par-fried. And I, I meant to ring the fish and chip shop this morning to find out how they do it. And I'm going to try one of those as well. We'll try to fry one just for a couple minutes, take it out and drain it, and see if we can then let it cool and refry it later for a better result. Maybe it's better. That's what they do. So... There's also a difference. If you're born in Victoria, you're going to call them potato cakes. I call them potato cakes. And if you're born in New South Wales, you're going to call them potato scallops. Um, it's the strangest thing because a scallop is seafood and they're not seafood, but they're called potato scallops in New South Wales. And I think they're called something else in Western Australia. Anyone here from Western Australia can tell me? Yes, Melanie. I wonder if you've been to a fish and chip shop though to have one. I want to know what they're called in Western Australia. Um, or in Adelaide. Rob, what are they called in Adelaide? They're called, there are three things over Australia. It's so funny that this one item has so many names, like go figure. It's sort of like cantaloupe and rock melon. You know, in Victoria, we have cantaloupe and then the same fruit over the border is called rock melon. So go figure. All right, so that's it. Have, check out her book, her book, Jane Lawson, Milk Bar Memories. If you're looking for those childhood memories, grab a copy of that book. All right. Now, I've tweaked her recipe just a tiny bit because oh, I've missed all of these because it just stopped for something, some reason. Um, uh, Rob, is that a spelling mistake? Potato cakes, perhaps, or potato vakes. I'm not sure. Um, okay, oh, hi, Jane. Jane's on today. So nice to have you with us. I feel so honoured cooking from your book because you're such a great cookbook author and foodie all round. So it's great to be cooking from your book. Um, uh, okay, so Deb says, same principle as the Heston triple cooked chip. Steam, 
fry on lower temp, fry on 180 and cool down each time. Ah, yeah. So that'll, that'll work well, hopefully. All right, let's first start with the oil. Um, what oil do you want to use for this? Well, they say that the best oil for frying is peanut oil. I never have peanut oil. I'm going to use whatever I have. I want a plain favoured flavoured oil. I would not use olive oil. You don't need to use that much olive oil for this. I would suggest a grapeseed, a rice bran, a whatever you have, okay? If you like canola, if you like sunflower, if you like vegetable, I'm not gonna judge any of those oils. We're not gonna be judgy here about what oils we use. I am using oil that I used the other day when I made these. So reusing oil is something you've gotta be careful of. I think that for some things it's okay to use it a couple times, maybe three times, but you have gotta be careful. Like you don't wanna fry salmon patties and then fried donuts, okay? So you really need to choose what you fry. And this is just for potato cakes, okay? And when I'm done with it, I'm probably gonna, this is gonna be my third time making them. I'm gonna probably leave it in this bottle and chuck it out in the bottle. Okay, so let's start heating the oil. I'm going to just move this, sorry for my hand, for a sec. I've got a little saucepan on. You know what, you could do it in a deep fryer, but I find that potato cakes are more forgiving than donuts because with donuts you don't want any oil in them at all. With potato cakes, you know, I don't mind if it's a bit oily, if you've cooked them, you know, not perfectly. It's sort of very forgiving and that's what I like about it. So I'm going to use a small saucepan so I don't have to use a ton of oil, okay, because they've got a float. So we're not shallow frying here, we are fully deep frying. You've got to own it, you've got to take it on, you've got to say, I am deep frying today, okay? can't hear you. Okay, you're going to use a lot of oil and you're going to eat deep fried food. This is why we're here. Okay, we can do this people. We can do it. So let's glug, glug, glug lots of oil into this sauce, but I want it about, let's say halfway. Not too much because of course you don't want to create a danger by it overflowing. Okay, so please take care. Perhaps I've put a little bit too much in. I might take this a bit out. In my excitement, I put too much in. So let me just take a little bit out. We can always add more later. But that should be perfect, okay? All right. Okay, yep, Linda, go girl, exactly. We're going to own this because we're also afraid of eating deep fried food. But you know what? Once in a while, so good for your soul. I promise you, you will feel better after eating this. Okay, thanks, Deb. A wok works really well. Absolutely, absolutely, because it's wider. But I'm only going to cook two or three at a time, okay? That's it. I'm happy so many comments of people saying I'm in. We're deep frying together, people. We can do this. Let's turn the oil on, and I'm gonna put on low. I wanna start heating it up slowly, and let's go back. Just keep it on low, not high, and I've also got a sugar slash deep fry thermometer in there, because I wanna check that I'm gonna be around 180 degrees, okay? Just an easy way to tell. If you don't have a thermometer, the way to tell it's at the correct temperature is when a piece of little cube of bread goes in and goes brown within 15 seconds, that's right. But it's hard to monitor it, but you'll work it out. When it's, when it's that hot, then you can just start cooking and you'll see if they cook too quickly, turn it down. You know, it's all very relaxed with a potato scallop compared to a donut, which is very, you know, you've got to be careful. All right, let's come back to the bench. Sorry about my hand again. All right. Please watch your oil. I don't want anybody's oil burning today. Let's get the ingredients ready for the batter. I did get them ready, you'll be pleased to know. I had a moment there where I thought, hmm, did I get the ingredients ready for the batter? I did. Okay. Um, oh, my bridge buddies are watching. Hey, Michelle and Linda, good to see you. I play bridge online and um, I see lots of the people who do these classes in the games and it's really fun. And they occasionally, um, you know, we occasionally have a chat if we can have got time between hands to about food and cooking and I love it. So, hey everybody. All right, so what we need is, and I've, I've just divided the recipe from Jane's book into three. I've made it one third of the recipe just because we don't need to make a, a ton of these, okay? We're just gonna make 10 or 12, however many slices of potato you've got, because that's all, you know, we need for lunch today. Okay, they don't last well, they need to be eaten straight away. So I'm going with this. We've got half a cup of plain flour. I've got a half a cup of, oh, sorry, half a cup, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, 
that's baking powder, not baking soda. Make sure you use the right one here. I've got a little bit of salt for later. We're going to sprinkle on top when they're fried. And I've got to measure because I need a half a cup of soda water or lightly or sparkling water. I'm just using Mount Franklin lightly sparkling because that's all I've got. So in your bowl, I'm going to get a whisk. Hold on a second. Where's my whisk? I'm coming back. Hold on. Okay. Whisk. I'm going to put in the dry ingredients first, like I always do. I'm going to put the salt, the baking powder, and the flour together. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a whisk just to combine it. That's it. It's really such a simple batter. Now, Jane also says you can use beer instead of soda water or mineral water, but I haven't done that yet. But that's a very common thing to cook things in beer batter. Um, okay, so we're going to whisk that. And then we're just going to add sparkling mineral water. Half a cup. So it's really easy to remember. It's half a cup of flour, half a cup of mineral water, and a half a teaspoon of baking powder and salt. So you want the bubbles because the bubbles also help sort of give it some air. But I'm not going to put it all in at once, okay, because I just want to hold back a little bit, okay. So put in, let's start with half, okay, and give it a whisk. I just, the first time I made it, I put it all in straight away and I wished that I would have held some back because um, I wanted it a bit thicker, the batter. So Rob's asked why baking powder instead of baking soda. Well, there's nothing acidic in this. So if you use bicarb as a leavening agent, you need something acidy, and there's nothing acidy in this. So you use baking soda when you use something like buttermilk or chocolate or, you know, acidic things. So in this case, or honey, actually. So in this case, there's none. So baking powder is the um, leavening agent of choice. Okay, so I've, put, I've probably left out about a tablespoon and a half still, and I want to whisk it, I want it to be smooth, okay? I'm just going to do a little bit of work here. Um, uh, good question, is it okay to let the batter stand? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I think so. Um, it's not like baking soda that's reacting straight away, baking powder is going to react to the heat when you cook it, so I think it can sit for a little while. I think that's fine. Um, if anyone's got a different view, Deb or, oh, Jane, there you go. She says not ideal. Okay, so no, let's listen to Jane. Leave your ingredients on the bench. It takes two seconds to make and make before. Okay, thank you, Jane. Okay, so, so happy to have Jane here. It's actually excellent. So mine is lovely and smooth. And the question is, um, is that thick enough? I'm going to put in another teaspoon, okay? I'm looking for a dippable batter. Is that a word I just made up? I want it to be dippable, um, but not too wet, that it won't stick to the sides of the potato, okay? So that's really important. Um, and I think that this is perfect now for me. Again, depends if you measure by weight or by um, cup. It just may be slightly different. So you can see it's a lovely batter. It has the consistency. It's thicker than pure cream from the tub. It has the consistency of probably tahini at this point. It's actually lovely. All right, that'll do me for now. Jane, are you happy with that? Um, okay, great. You think dipish is a better word? No, oh, I like dippable. Yeah, I'm taking dip. Yeah, Joe agrees with me. Sorry, Rob, we're going dippable. Um, good morning, Lizzie. How nice to see you here. Nice to have you here, Joe, actually, as well. I did a great event with Joe. Joe was the moderator slash interviewer when I was with, um, for the Sydney Jewish Writers Festival. So nice to have you here, Joe. Okay, so that's my batter. I've got my potatoes. Now think carefully about what you're going to do, how you're going to do this, whether you're going to dip it with your hands and then put them in the oil. You've sort of got to be careful and plan ahead. And I think... If you put a fork into that potato, I'm a bit nervous that um, it's going to split apart. Remember, it's been cooked and I don't want it to split. So it's up to you. I think I'm happy to put them in here with my hand and then I'm going to get a palette knife and I'm going to slip them into the oil using that um, just because I don't want to disturb it too much, okay? It doesn't have to be complicated, but it's going to be in there and then into the oil, okay? Let's get something to drain them on. Um, 
There's a whole debate going on about whether it's better to drain on paper towel, baking paper, or on a rack. I think I, I'm in two minds about it. Check your oil, everyone. Mine is only at uh, 85. I, I don't know if anyone cooked the potatoes ahead. I did send the recipe out earlier. We wanted to get to 180, and I find that the slower I get there, the easier it is to control it when it's at the temperature. If you put on really high, and it's at 180 and it's been going on full heat. I find that when you put the potatoes in, it just keeps going up and up and up because it's like on a on a path surging up. So I don't know if that makes any sense scientifically or not, but you know what? I think it's a it makes a lot of sense to me. Brown paper bag, yeah, that's what my mum used to use to drain things always. Maybe they didn't have paper towel back in the day. I don't know. I'm gonna just get a um, wrap. I want to try that fish and chip shop trick where I'm going to par fry my first two and put them on the rack to drain and then see what happens. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. We'll fry them right at the end. Okay, I should have put my phone on do not disturb, but I sort of can't reach now. So, okay, hopefully no one will ring me and disturb this. Um, okay, so I've just got a rack. For the ones that I'm going to eat now, um, paper towel actually worked perfectly the other day. So I'm going to just get some paper towel. And again, um, you can all experiment at home with paper towel versus brown paper versus a rack and um, see which one you like better. I said the other day, I feel like paper towel sometimes makes things soggy. I don't know why I think that. Um, it's just a feeling I have. All right, so I've got this ready. I've got my oil frying. I'm going to turn you around. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I mean, it said the other day, or someone said, I care Wipex paper towels from Woolworths. I care Wipex paper towels from Woolworths are good. Okay. So how are we going with our oil? Let's have a look. We are up to 110. My, um, deep, mine says to deep fry at 190. What does Jane say in her book? I find that 180, 185 works really well for me. Here. And I just want to see what Jane recommends. Yeah, she says 180, so she's with me. So a lot of the books say 190, which I just find too hot. We want them golden brown, but we don't want to like, they've got to cook through. I mean, the potato's cooked, but the whole batter has to cook through and has to have time to rise without browning too quickly. Okay, so I can, you can hear my oil. I think I've even got time to have a sip of tea, actually. Um, yeah, so double frying is great, actually. That's the answer. Deb just said the same thing. So we're going to try that, see how far we take it. And maybe it just needs to be sealed, the batter, and just fried. Like I'm picturing the ones in the fish and chip shop on the, you know, behind the counter. Um, yeah, 180 is the magic number. And for tempura as well. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jane. Scrunch the paper towel, she says. So happy to have you here. Let's do that. I'm going to put two pieces of paper towel underneath. And I'm using a bowl just because it's closer than a plate. And I'm going to scrunch the paper towel and I'm going to put it there, okay? So that's what I'm doing and I'm ready when they're ready to put them in, okay? I'm also going to get some tongs. Uh, no, not some tongs. Hold on, bear with me. I was looking for this this morning. Hmm. I've got this really good thing that I, that I keep losing. Hold on. I've got a mini, a mini one of these, which is actually what I want, but I can't find it at this moment. My oil is still heating, 125. No, just don't know where it is. Anyway, okay, great. Paper towel is scrunched in the bowl, ready to drain. Oil is heating slowly rather than quickly. It's coming up to 130. It'll be there in a couple of minutes. I have got some salt ready because what I want to do is before it drains too much, what did I do with the salt? I want to sprinkle some salt on it. And I'm using some lovely, fine, flaky sea salt, the blossoms from Olsen. I'm going to sprinkle that on top. Um, okay. Is it in the dishwasher, Dorothy? You know what? I had a look in the dishwasher and it's not there. Let me have another look. Maybe it's in the different rack. That's what I've got too. Isn't it in the dishwasher? No, nope, not there. No, nope, not 
of the excitement ahead. It's really quite exciting to be frying together. It's really the sort of thing, I promise you, every time I go into my fish shop, and where I buy my fish, I've got a couple of fish shops, um, but the one in Rose Bay, which is called Fish at the Bay, they have the Ora King salmon, by the way, but I'm not going to start on salmon now. They have fish and chips as well, and I stand there, I promise you, every time, and I um, think, oh, should I order a potato, potato scallop? I think potato cake. Should I order one? And I see other people come in and get their fish and chips. I'm like, no, no, not going to do it. And I never, ever have. Can you believe that? I've deprived myself all these decades. Um, Jane, you think I need wine instead of tea? No, I just can't. It's just too, too early for red wine, I think. If I had perhaps a little Bloody Mary, I could do that now quite happily. Yeah, that'd be quite good. Um... <laughs> And Joe jo says that the sun's over the yard, so why not? Is that the, is that the telling thing? Is that the is that when we can have a drink? Um, and Ocean Seafood in Rose Bay, that's the one. The one um, that's right near me. Also, Rose Bay North, they have really good fish and chips too. They have excellent potato scallops, really good. Oh, hey Angela, so good to have you here. I love all your stuff. She makes the most beautiful, beautiful Italian food you have ever seen. That's Angela Palermo. Check her out on in Instagram. Yeah, I know it is after 5 p.m. somewhere, but that's is that something we can really live with? I remember during Melbourne's lockdown last year and I was doing some of these and I was encouraging them all to have a drink at, I think, 10 o'clock in the morning. But now that we are here and it's 11, it's 12 o'clock, I don't know, it just is a very bad habit to get into, really, isn't it? Yeah, particularly because we don't know when this is going to end. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, French champagne and potato scallops. I love it. I think they go really well together. All right, how are we going? Okay, we're at 160. Um, and I don't know if my theory is right about not heating it too quickly. Um, just when you're doing it in the home kitchen, deep fry is a different story because it, it does it itself. Okay, so I've got my batter, which is sitting here, ready to be dipped. I've got my reserved mineral water that I didn't use in case I find that it gets a little thick. And it has thickened a little tiny bit on standing. Um, so I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit more of liquid in. And I guess that's one reason Jane said not to do it ahead. It'll probably just thicken up. And you'll probably have glue by the time you want to use it as a batter. Okay, so you want a nice runny batter like that, but not too runny, okay? Okay, here we go. I've got my potatoes, which have been dried. This is getting up to 165. It's going to be at 180 in a minute. And the thing, my temperature is medium low at the moment, okay, and a bit higher than medium low. I'm going to turn it up to just in between medium low and medium. Very excited for these. Okay, so the first two I'm going to fry, I'm going to take out, when I think it's the colour of the par fried ones in the fish and chip shop, that's going to be my, te my, my identifying colour. This is what I'm going to guess if that's going to work or not, okay. My potatoes are lovely and dry. I took a bite, they're fully cooked, okay? And um, Jane in her book uses the floury potatoes because and I, and I, we were messaging each other about it the other day, because that's the memory she's got from her childhood fish and uh, potato scallops. I can't remember what the inside of mine were like as a kid, um, but I do remember <laughs> I was in Foster in January this year, I think, or February, and our friends have got a place there, and just down the road from their place is this most random fish and chip shop. They're only open random hours. She, the woman never had potato scallops. She said, no, not today, not today. Like, I don't, didn't understand. There were no people in the shop anyway. Finally, with perseverance, Danny went there like every two hours, got the potato scallops from her shop, and they were honestly better than anything I've ever had in my life. There was something about her potato that she'd done very carefully and it reminded me of a sticky, waxy potato, which is what I wanted in this one. 
So your choice, you want to go flowery, waxy. This is waxy for that reason. Okay, I am exactly on 180. I'm now going to turn it down because it's going to keep going up itself and I'm going to put it in. Um, the book is called Milk Bar Memories by Jane Lawson. And Google it and you can get it. Um, okay, here we go. I'm going to pop into the batter with my hands, my fingers. Now again, you can either do it like that and carefully put it into the oil if you're confident that you won't burn yourself. Okay, that's the thing we've got to be careful of. Not burning and I'm going to put it in carefully. Okay, and it's probably safer and I, and I have to, you know, be careful when I'm telling people to do this. To, it's probably safer to do it like this. As long as you don't drop it, you just carefully place it in. And I'm going to do three at a time in that little saucepan, okay? All right. Yeah, Deb, I wonder what they were too in... Um... No, I'm here to tell you whether it's as good as the one in Foster or not. <laughs> Honest answer. Just waiting a few minutes. No, I'd be ready. You'll have to wait. You'll have to wait. So, um, I, I wanted to ask the woman, but honestly, she was so <laughs> abrupt every time you went in. And I was too scared to ask her what she did. But if anyone's in Foster or nearby, well, I don't know what street it was. It's right across the road from the boats. There's like the boat, what's it called? The boat thing, where all the boats live. Marina. <laughs> Marina. <laughs> Lost the word. It's right opposite the, the, mar the little marina. Opposite of down 100 metres. Outside of town. I don't even know what direction. But if anyone's there, please go and find out. What, how she did her potatoes, they were bloody amazing. Like really, I've never had potato scallops like it. Okay, so now my temperature's dropping a bit, which it does as you put things in. So I'm not gonna turn it to high, cause that's gonna send it up too high. I'm gonna put it up to, again, to medium low. But I do find, as I said, these are way more forgiving than donuts. And if they're a bit oily, it's not the end of the world. And you'll get, you'll get the hang of it. Okay, so I'm gonna take that out now. Now I want you to see that it is light, it is not cooked at all on the outside, but that's going to be the one that I'm going to cook again at the end. Okay, I'm going to take the three of them out and see what happens, okay? And I'm not putting them on a paper towel because I don't mind if they're oily because they're going to be fried again, okay? So I actually want to leave um, the oil sticking to them. Okay, let's have a look. Our oil has now gone a bit colder again, back up to 180. Um, okay, so let's go again. Let's dip. I was trying to get these onto fry and then I want to read what Jane has said. Okay, all right. Here we go. So potato in carefully. And if it doesn't sizzle as soon as you put it in, then your oil is not hot enough. That's really, really important to remember. If it just goes, mm, when you put it in like nothing, then you know your oil is definitely, definitely not hot enough, okay? Okay, next one in. And I'm gonna do three again. Okay, so Jane says, you can cook your potatoes in the oven in stock or dashy for lots of flavor. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Someone actually told me the other day, gave me a recipe, my friend Lance, for salt and vinegar roasted potatoes. And you cook the potatoes in water with vinegar or vinegar, just vinegar, which I think might be a nice idea. So you get salt and vinegar, um, potato scallops, potato cakes. I don't know if I'm Melbourne or Sydney today. I want to call them potato cakes, but it doesn't feel quite right. Jashi is Japanese stock. Is that the right way to describe it, Jane? Jane's the, the queen of all things Japanese. She knows it all. Um, okay, so into fry, watch the temperature. Again, three at a time, turn it up a tiny bit. Now they're gonna take about six or seven minutes to cook, okay? Because we want them really, really golden, okay? So Jane says, dashi is the base stock the Japanese use in miso, etc., and pretty much everything. So that would give a completely different flavor to this. Um, I'm a very um, plain cooking sort of a girl. I love plain things. I grew up in a very delicious but plain household of food. You know, the food was Eastern European, Ashkenazi cooking and so it was very much meat and potatoes and fried onions and we never saw a herb except for dill in the cucumbers we never had a spice except for cinnamon in apple cake and so for me 
I always err to the side of plainness, but I love all these suggestions to pimp these up. Okay, how brilliant to have Jane in today. It's just the best. It's just unreal that you're here, Jane. I can't believe it. Okay, so these are frying nicely. Just watch the temperature. They've gone down to 170. Um, and because they're floating, you don't even need to turn them. They're just deep frying nicely. Um, maybe we'll give them a turn in a little while, but I don't think they'll need it. They're just frying on both sides and they're lovely. So, ah, so Jane's got salt and vinegar chips. Uh -huh. I did read it cover to cover, but I must have missed that one because I had my eyes on the potato scallops. It's a really good book. It really is. Um, I love it. Yeah, Linda, keep it simple. Um, okay, let's have a look. Salt and vinegar chips. 37. It's a really, it's a beautiful book. And when Murdoch were doing such amazing books, Jane was the publisher there as well. So, you know, So she really is very, very, very talented at this and very, very smart. And her books are magnificent. All right, so I'm eating a chips. Um, ah, okay, so you soak your potatoes in white vinegar, malt vinegar and salt in slices. And then you dry them and then go ahead and fry them. So you could really do that for this, couldn't you? You could salt, you could cook them in the vinegar in the oven. Yeah. I think that would be quite nice. But I'm going to actually sprinkle vinegar on them when I eat them because I love it with vinegar as well. Okay, again, temperature's now at 180. It's bubbling robustly, which is what I want. And just to have a look to show you how well it's done, it's not brown enough yet, okay? I really, really want them like the picture on my Instagram, really golden, okay? To me, um, you can't overcook this potato. You can only get the batter golden. You know, you've got to get it perfect. Because if we're going to go to the effort of A, deep frying and B, eating all this food that's not the best for us, it has to be perfect, okay? Yeah, I'm glad you can smell it from here, from there, Jane. It's good. I can smell it too. It smells amazing. I'm sure my neighbours have got beautiful smells coming their way. Totally mouth-watering. Is anyone cooking with me? Does anyone, did anyone do the potatoes ahead? I wonder if anyone is that efficient who actually did the potatoes already. Yum, so delicious. Oh, now it's going too hot, so I'm gonna turn it down a bit. That's the thing without a deep fryer, you do have to pay attention to it and take care. It's a, it's a dangerous sport. But still, cooking nicely, frying beautifully. And Jane's recipe says seven to eight minutes. You have to judge for yourself your oil might have been hotter or not hot, and you need to just not go by the clock for this one, but actually watch it and make sure they're right, okay? Um, oh, yay, so somebody's cooking. Ah, Susie's cooking, moonbeam movement, fantastic. You are good, Susie, you are good. These are starting to look really good. The problem if you cook them too quickly is that the batter can go too hard, I think. So mine have gone up to 200, which is not ideal. I'm trying to bring it down now. You know, that's, it's hard to talk and, and watch, you know. Um, so, can I recap the recipe once potatoes are cooked? Sure. Once the potatoes are cooked, you need to make your batter, which is very simple. Half a cup of plain flour, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and half a cup of sparkling water or soda water or beer. Mix it together. I left off about a tablespoon of water to make sure the batter was the right consistency. That's it dip them in and fry them at about 180 degrees or as close as you can get. Mine have gone nuts. Okay, how are we going here? The color is absolutely beautiful. Have a look at that. It's getting golden. I love it. I'm very excited. Yum. And they're just having a lovely swim in that hot oil and they're frying away happily. So delicious. So crunchy. I actually like a bit of oil in it. It just reminds me of my childhood. They were always oily when you ate them from the fish and chip shop. Always. All right. Now my, oil, my temperature is coming down a bit. Okay. So when you fry, it's good if you can just focus on the frying and not chat and have 15 conversations at the same time, okay? It's better to focus. All right, how are we going? Yeah, it's a good thing. I think, Kakam, you're talking about this. I love it. It's like a mini chicken soup skimmer. It's fantastic. 
All right, how are we going here? I think that, that can, I can take these out now. I think they are as good as ready. What do you think? No, maybe another minute. You know what, I want them to be perfect. So I'm gonna eat them. Uh, yes, so calm reminds me, so the oil is laughing, not smiling. Um, when I did a chicken soup class, I think, or a, a, I think it was chicken soup, someone said that when their grandmother taught them that the, the boil of the water needs to be, it can be either smiling, which is boiling robustly, or, sorry, laughing, which is boiling robustly, or smiling, which is just a little, a little bubble. And so I think that's a fantastic thing. So this is laughing. My oil is definitely laughing. It's a really, really great analogy and I love it. Um, ah, okay. So Karen always double cooks her French fries and chips. First try to cook, first fry to cook and second fry to brown. Yeah, love it. So now we're gonna fry them and take these out because these are pretty good. I'm really happy with these. And those little bits that are sticking off are golden, golden. I'm just gonna put them onto my scrunched paper towel as advised by Jane Lawson herself to dry like that. And I'm gonna sprinkle some salt on it while they've still got a bit of oil clinging to them so that the salt sticks to it. And they're way too hot to eat now, okay? Don't eat them yet, they're too hot. You'll burn your mouth, I did that last week. Of course I did that, you know. All right, let's go. So now my oil is at 180. I'm gonna take the ones that I did earlier, which are now room temperature, and I'm gonna put them in carefully into the oil. This is the second fry. And my oil is at 180 and they are, that oil is mm, somewhere between smiling and laughing. Okay, that's the second fry for those babies. Oh, hey, my friend Tam's with us. This is T Gross. One, two, three, who was with me in Turak Village when we used to eat them as teenagers? Those were the days. So, this is my potato scallop, done and delicious. Still too hot to eat, I think. I know you all want me to have a bite. Well, I'll tell myself that you want me to because, you know, it's my job, right? Mm. Okay, these are frying nicely, the second fry. The good thing about frying them twice is you can do all this work. Let's say you want to serve them for lunch or dinner at a certain time, and you don't want to stand in the kitchen doing this before serving. Do everything, power fry them, put them on a rack, leave them at room temperature. I reckon you can leave them for a couple hours and then fry them at the last minute to serve, okay? I think that's a really good idea. Watching this temperature again, it goes up and down without me paying attention. I think that um, I'm gonna have a bite, okay? Just because I have to. Can you hear that? Did you hear that? Like, listen. So, need more salt. It's just so delicious. And I love that the potato is so hot inside and so soft and not sticky, but you know, on the way to being sticky. I wonder what that lady in Foster did. Mmm. A bit hot. I said to one of my kids last night. You can't taste stuff when it's too hot. It's just too hot to taste. So it's better to leave it a minute and then I'll put some vinegar, vinegar on it and taste it properly. Um, okay, so Rob says there's also an awesome chippy down at 13th Beach. Come out freezing after surf in July, get chips and cakes and a chocolate milkshake. Yep, that's what life's about, isn't it? How good is that crunch? It's amazing. All right, let's have a look how these are going. These are gonna be beautiful. I'm excited for these, the double fried. I think that's the answer. So you can see how a small saucepan works nicely, but you've really got to pay attention. If you have a deep fryer, by all means use that. I do, but sometimes I just can't be bothered getting it out. You know what I mean? Just as easy to do this. But you do have to watch it because it's gone down again to 170 as I was chatting. So that's it, I think, for me. And I, I don't need to stand and do all these in front of you because you're going to be doing your own. Hopefully your potatoes are going to be ready soon. Um, they cool quickly on the bench and then you can go ahead to the next step. 
And remember all the tips we've learnt today from Jane and from um, Deb in Melbourne. Thank you guys. You've really added to this morning. It's been fantastic. I love a little collaborative effort. Because um, the potato cakes or potato scallops aren't something that I have been making at all, you know, in my life because it's sort of, you know, who would make them at home? But really, I think we should. Yes, Danny's here. He's going to have one. He likes it really salty. Now I'm nervous that he's standing here and he's going to eat it in front of everyone. I'm very judgy with my food sometimes, so I don't know how this is going to be. It's very hot. And which vinegar? Oh, well, the vinegar's not out. I don't know. I, I, I've run out of the brown vinegar, which is what I wanted. So here. What do you reckon about this? Like, let's go really, really old school and just use the corn rules. I don't know. Yep. Okay, ready? Do you want me to do a bit of vinegar? Mm -hmm. How is it? He's over there and we're all waiting to see. <laughs> Good. Okay, so let me have a little taste with vinegar. That's really good. It's really, really good, Jane. I've, I've, honestly, this is an exceptional, exceptional recipe. And I'm so happy that I can share it. Because it's just delicious. And these ones that are frying again. Maybe it needs to be done a bit more on the inside, maybe. What did you say? Maybe it needs to be done a bit more on the inside. Really? I don't know. He says it maybe needs to be a bit done. What did you say? A bit more done on the inside. What, the potato's not cooked? Yeah, I think so. No. Mmm. It's oh, cooked. Mmm. It's cooked. It's so delicious. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. I'm just going to keep eating them because... Then people are going to say to you later, what did you do today? And you're going to say, well... I watched Lisa Goldberg eat potato cakes on IGTV or on Insta Live. I mean, that's a fun thing to do. Watch someone eat it. No, no, no. Ah, uh, yes, you know what? Mojo 8 says you're wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy that everyone's, like, chatting. And, um, Tam, you can't go to Marika's because you can't leave Melbourne. It's just so sad, isn't it? Um, brand of thermometer. I'm using one. Mine is Techni Therm. It's a... Just a sugar thermometer candy, whatever. My other one is Tala, T-A-L-A. -A. You can buy them online. They're really, they're not expensive and it's really worth grabbing one for yourself. It's just so handy, especially when you deep fry and when you make candy or sugar work, whatever. It's really, really good. Okay, so these are just about done. I'm going to keep cooking for another couple minutes. These look excellent. Look how good these double fried ones look really happy with these um thank you all for being part of this morning it's been really really great and i've loved making a childhood memory thank you jane lawson for your book for your guidance and for helping us this morning thank you everyone for being here today see you tomorrow we're making pierogan little meat pies they are really good you'll be amazed they're not like a usual thing you've ever seen before um, a really really fabulous fabulous recipe that you can make a batch, stick them in the freezer and bake them to order. And that's what I love. And then if you haven't signed up already, you've got till 3 o'clock today to sign up for the Michael Rantizi and Lisa Goldberg cooking class on Sunday. Head to Kepos Street Kitchen for all the info under cooking class. It's going to be really fun and super, super delicious, I promise you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. It's been fun and delicious, probably more delicious for me since I'm eating these now and you're not. But hopefully you'll go away now and be inspired to cook. Take care with the oil. It's really hot and really dangerous, okay? And please pay attention when you're cooking, not like I have been doing. Anyway, stay safe, everyone. Stay home if you're in lockdown. And, of course, get vaccinated ASAP. Make an appointment if you haven't already. It's really important.